Edgar Berlanga did not hold back in his response to Oscar De La Hoya's remarks leading up to Berlanga's highly anticipated bout with Canelo Alvarez. However, not everyone is embracing the narrative surrounding Berlanga. Oscar De La Hoya, head of Golden Boy Promotions and a former world champion, has voiced his strong opinions on Berlanga's identity. De La Hoya took issue with Berlanga being labeled as a representative of Puerto Rico, pointing out that Berlanga was born and raised in Brooklyn. In De La Hoya's view, this undermines Berlanga's claim to truly represent Puerto Rico. In a recent episode, episode of his Clapback Thursdays, De La Hoya didn't mince words. Edgar Berlanga, who is fighting Canelo on September 14th, now he claims he has a whole country behind him? Edgar, bro, you're from Brooklyn. I think I'm more Puerto Rican than you are. De La Hoya didn't stop there. He questioned the success of the upcoming bout. His skepticism is fueled not only by Berlanga's background, but also by the fact that UFC 306 is scheduled on the same night, just down the road at the MGM Grand, potentially drawing viewers away from the boxing event. He warned the fight organizers that the Berlanga and Canelo fight wouldn't make it that big to the Turkey Al Al Sheikh event. Puerto Rico doesn't claim you, bro. And as I said weeks ago, this fight will not do well on September 14. Not only because the matchup is okay, but because they're going up against the UFC's debut at the Sphere in Las Vegas. Now that's a spectacle that everyone and their mother has been waiting to see since it opened up about a year ago. And who is funding it and making it all happen? Turkey Al Sheikh. Berlangs, as always, didn't set back. In a fiery and explicit tweet, Edgar Berlanga lashed out at Oscar De La Hoya, accusing him of hypocrisy and disrespect. Berlanga expressed his frustration by reminding De La Hoya that, just last year, the promoter was eager to sign him, even flying out to meet with him. The tweet escalates in intensity as Berlanga takes a personal jab at De La Hoya, alluding to his rumored struggles with substance abuse, which adds a deeply personal and confrontational edge to the already heated exchange. He wrote, Get off my Oscar De La Hoya, you was dying to sign me last year and flew in to sit down with me and again was on my I'ma have a bag of coke for you. Edgar Berlanga responded to Oscar with brutal honesty, calling him out for his perceived hypocrisy. Berlanga's response was filled with frustration as he felt disrespected by De La Hoya's comments about his heritage and legitimacy as a Puerto Rican representative. In reaction, De La Hoya maintained that he was simply stating the truth. He acknowledged that he did pursue Berlanga last year and wanted to sign him, but ultimately, Berlanga chose to go with Eddie Hearn instead. Wait, 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 but all I'm doing is, all I'm doing is speaking facts. You know, when I'm spitting the truth, you guys can't come. What, what else can I say and do? I mean, you guys. that was just the truth. I'm not, I, I, I actually, yeah, I did want to sign Berlanga, but, you know, he went with Eddie Hearn, and good luck to him, but I'm just speaking the facts. Thank you, Oscar. Bye, bro. The long-standing history between Canelo and De La Hoya intensifies this rivalry even further. Since their contentious split in 2020, the two have consistently exchanged barbs through the media, and now Berlanga is caught in the crossfire of this ongoing feud. Oscar De La Hoya had long been vocal about his displeasure with Canelo Alvarez, and his latest remarks only deepened the rift between them. He accused Canelo of being overly arrogant, highlighting a recent revelation by a leak who claimed that Canelo refused to meet with him and was uninterested in any potential deal. Deals. De La Hoya suggested that Canelo's demands had become so excessive that even the Saudis were unwilling to negotiate with him. According to De La Hoya, this behavior stemmed from Canelo's desire to avoid a fight with David Benavides, opting instead for matchups that lacked appeal. So it turns out I'm not the only one who thinks Canelo is an arrogant piece of shit. Turkey Al Sheik recently revealed that Canelo refused to meet with him in person and isn't entertaining any deals to be done with him. Why? Because he's outpriced himself so much that the Saudis don't even want to deal with him. And it's all because he will do anything not to fight David Benavides. Look, Turkey is trying to make the best fights that everybody wants to see. And Canelo continues to take the fights that nobody wants to see. After accusing Canelo of dodging significant fights and overpricing himself, De La Hoya didn't hold back, making it clear that he believed Canelo was alienating the wrong people within the boxing world. De La Hoya then added, Canelo, you're making the wrong enemies, but you know what? 
The recent press conference between Canelo Alvarez and Edgar Berlanga was marked by intense exchanges, leading many to believe the animosity between the two fighters is genuine. However, there has been growing speculation that the heated confrontation might be a calculated move to generate hype and increase pay-per-view sales. Oscar De La Hoya addressed the controversy surrounding the heated press conference between Canelo and Berlanga. He explained that in the fight business, a fighter must motivate themselves and develop a sense of anger towards their opponent to prepare mentally for the battle ahead. You're in the fight business, right? You're in the fight game and you have to you have to be able to motivate yourself. You have to be able to you know to to literally have anger towards your opponent because you're gonna fight him. So you know the, the the all this talk during the press conferences and it just hypes you up and it gets you ready mentally to go up against your opponent. So Oscar De La Hoya continued by expressing skepticism about the way the Canelo versus Berlanga fight was being marketed. He questioned the authenticity of framing the bout as a Mexico versus Puerto Rico rivalry, pointing out that Berlanga is actually from New York. De La Hoya humorously noted that, despite the promotional angle, he might be more Puerto Rican than Berlanga, having lived in Puerto Rico for six years. He emphasized his familiarity with the culture, suggesting that true Puerto Ricans might not fully support Berlanga in this matchup. Oscar said, the one thing that is not real that they're building this fight as Mexico versus Puerto Rico. I don't know if that's real because the last time I checked, Berlanga was from New York. I think I'm more Puerto Rican than Berlanga. I lived there for six years, so I know what people love. I know who they're going to support. Recently, Berlang's opponent has been in hot waters with Turkey Alalshik, a Saudi sports promoter. He ditched the fight with Crawford over financial disputes and has been called out by fans for always ducking the bigger names and going for easy fights. After the fight, failed to get planned. My response to Turkey is this. Yesterday they text me. They text me and say, we can talk about the fight in February with Crawford. Yeah. They call me, they text me yesterday and I say, look, I'm not gonna talk about any other fight. I'm focused 100% on this fight. Look, I don't like the way he talk and I'm not in this position because of any. I'm in this position, if he wants to work with me, he's in my way, knowing their way. What was I don't he need like, it. What, what didn't you like about how he approached? Like, what was it's, he it's, it's not, a, it's, it's not a, the, the, yeah, the I, way to approach. It's not the way to approach to me. Look, I respect everybody and I respect Turkey, but I look. Turkey Al Al Sheikh, in response to Canelo Alvarez's reluctance to agree to a fair price for a fight with Terence Crawford, made his stance clear. He dismissed the importance of Canelo's respect, emphasizing that it was irrelevant to him. Al Al Sheikh criticized Canelo for avoiding big, meaningful fights, suggesting that Canelo preferred easier, less challenging bouts. He accused Canelo of making excuses and demanding exorbitant sums that were unrealistic, ultimately labeling Canelo's approach as one that favors easy, show-only fights. Al Al Sheikh reaffirmed his commitment to pursuing significant fights that truly benefit the boxing world, contrasting his vision with Canelo's approach. Turkey stated, As for him respecting me, it doesn't matter to me if he does or not. As for the way I do business, I know why he doesn't like it, because I only target big fights at fair prices. So of course anyone who likes easy fights won't like that. I knew he was wasting our time and making excuses with big amounts of money that can't be paid. So I'm continuing my way to make big fights that serve the boxing world, and he's on his way to making easy show-only fights. Oscar De La Hoya put his words on the ongoing tension between Turkey Al Al Sheikh and Canelo Alvarez. De La Hoya pointed out that Turkey was right, that Canelo has been taking easier fights since his loss to Dimitri Bivol, comparing that defeat to the schooling Canelo received from Floyd Mayweather earlier in his career. De La Hoya found it perplexing, especially from a fighter's standpoint, that Canelo would shy away from a fight with Benavidez, which is what the public truly wants to see. He emphasized that while Turkey is focused on making the best fights possible, Canelo seems more interested interested in taking the path of least resistance. Turkey makes perfect sense. I mean, if you take a look at uh, Canelo's fight against Bivol, where, again, he got schooled, like Mayweather, um, at a different division, ever since that loss, he's been taking the easy road. And those are not the fights that the public wants to see. They're, they're just not. We don't want to see, you know, these types of fights that are going to take place with Berlanga. We want to see Benavides. What is wrong with fighting Benavides? I, I do not understand, as a fighter myself, I do not understand why you do not want to fight uh, uh, Benavides. It's mind-boggling to me. So 
The Sheik wants to make the best fights, and Canelo wants to make the worst fights. This situation has fueled a broader conversation about whether Canelo is truly seeking out the best competition available, or if he's strategically choosing opponents to maintain his status without facing the toughest challengers. Whoever the fire went to Berlanga as well, where every other promoter and boxing fan is fighting and getting into heating brawls, the fighters are no less. So Edgar Berlanga made it clear that he isn't taking his fight with Canelo Alvarez lightly and warned Canelo against underestimating him. Berlanga expressed his determination, stating that he would break every bone in Canelo's face. He emphasized that this wasn't just talk and highlighted his tough upbringing in Puerto Rico's rough neighborhoods. Berlanga asserted that he wouldn't let any disrespect slide and was fully prepared to prove himself on fight night. Berlanga said, I told him, I'm gonna break every bone in your face. It's not shit capping. He knows the vibes already. I'm Puerto Rican. We come from the hood where we don't let any of that shit slide. We'll see on September 14th. When asked about Canelo Alvarez's claim that he was nervous after the press conference, Edgar Berlanga strongly denied any fear. He passionately refuted the idea, swearing on his son's life and invoking his faith, stating that he didn't feel even an ounce of fear. Berlanga emphasized that Canelo could see the truth in his eyes, insisting that while Canelo might have intimidated other fighters in the past, he wasn't intimidated by him. Jesus Christ, on oh my son, I didn't have not one ounce of fear, you hear me? I didn't have not one ounce of fear, bro. And he know I, the eyes never lie, bro. This right here, you could tell when somebody got fear. Don't put fear in me. He put fear in them other guys. Probably those other guys he fully probably put fear in them. He ain't putting fear in us. During the press conference, many people felt that Canelo Alvarez was underestimating Edgar Berlanga, and Berlanga certainly picked up on that vibe. When asked about Chenlo's behaviors, Berlnogs admitted that Canelo is underestimating his powers. He felt strongly that Canelo's wealth and arrogance didn't make him a better person, emphasizing that it's one's heart and how one treats others that truly matters. Berlanga also pointed out that many people in Mexico share his sentiment, criticizing Canelo's behavior and attitude. A thousand percent. A thousand percent. Right here. And I'll tell him in his face. I, I, any way I see him, I'm telling him here. You know what I'm saying? Cause he a, he a bitch. And money don't make you. He talk about all this bread. Gotta have a hundred million, billion dollars, trillion dollars. Money don't make you, bro. It's about your heart and about how you treat other people. That's why a lot of the Mexicans and Mexico don't like him. It's a hundred percent facts. A lot of people in Mexico don't like him. He's a, he's an arrogant dude. Berlanga didn't stop at criticizing Canelo's attitude. He went on to describe Canelo as a diva, someone who is overly sensitive and self-centered. He used strong language to underscore his point, even going so far as to question Canelo's toughness and masculinity. Berlanga's words are harsh, but they reflect his deep disdain for what he sees as Canelo's inflated ego and lack of humility. He argued that Canelo's behavior has alienated many fans, particularly in Mexico, where he believes people see through Canelo's facade. And I kept saying that he's a diva. The dude, his shirt's wrinkled, he starts crying. That's the type of person he is, you know what I'm saying? He's a diva. He got, he don't got, he don't got, he was going like this. He was going like that. Yeah, why'd you, why he was got, he doing that? He was, that, and, um, Mexican as like, Mexico as like, um, like, you know? Yeah, in the UK like, it would be like, white or yeah, something yeah. like that, yeah. But yeah. he got a, he got a, he don't got a, he got a, a girl. He gave birth to his kids. He's a female. As Edgar Berlanga prepares for his highly anticipated clash with Canelo Alvarez on September 14th at the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas, the stage is set for what promises to be a fierce battle between Mexico and Puerto Rico. This classic rivalry has been a winning formula for Canelo in the past, and the stakes couldn't be higher as he defends his WBA, WBO, and WBC super middleweight titles. The excitement among fans is palpable, with many eagerly awaiting this electrifying showdown. Teddy Atlas, a respected boxing trainer and analyst, shared his thoughts on Edgar Berlanga's upcoming fight with Canelo Alvarez. He acknowledged Berlanga's progress, but also pointed out that he still might lack the experience necessary to take on a fighter of Canelo's caliber. Atlas believes that while Berlanga has improved, he could have benefited from a few more high-level fights before facing someone as seasoned as Canelo. Atlas stated, I believe that Berlanga is in the same sort of boat where he has improved, but he still needed a few more fights at that level to season him enough to handle a guy like Canelo. Atlas then touched on a critical factor that could influence the outcome, Canelo's age. He admitted that Canelo, although still a formidable fighter, is starting to show signs of aging, which could be a vulnerability. Atlas emphasized that no fighter can escape the effects of time, and Canelo might be beginning to feel its impact. 
He continued, Canelo's a little older now, and that's the one thing he's battling against. There's a tiny bit of slippage, if you're going to be honest, but he's still terrific. Nobody wins 100% of the time against Father Time. Sooner or later, Father Time gets you. Finally, Atlas speculated that this slight decline in Canelo's abilities could work in Berlanga's favor. If Canelo has aged since his last fight, it could open the door for Berlanga to capitalize on that and possibly pull off an upset. Atlas concluded, I don't know where Canelo is in that, in that battle yet, but I know he's getting there. And maybe, maybe that he's gotten a little older since the McGee fight. That could play for Belenga where he gets old. Because there will be a day if he stays around long enough where you say, oh, wow, he got old. Like, as you're watching, you say, wow, he got old. Bernard Hopkins, on the other hand, thinks that Berlanga has ignited Canelo. He has lit the fire with his words that will burn him down. In a recent media talk, he suggested that Berlanga's words might have inadvertently fired up Canelo, turning what could have been a more straightforward fight into a potential disaster for Berlanga. Hopkins pointed out that sometimes staying quiet can lead to a less brutal fight, allowing a fighter to survive and fight another day. Hopkins said, The worst thing he did to Canelo was energize him to destroy. You know, sometimes you just keep your mouth shut, and the guy doesn't beat you up that bad and you live to fight another day. Berlanga blew that. Hopkins further warned that Berlanga's provocation had changed Canelo's mindset. What might have been just another fight for Canelo had now become personal. Hopkins believed that Canelo, motivated by Berlanga's words, was now determined to inflict serious damage far beyond just winning the match to prove a point and punish Berlanga. He added, Canelo took that off the table. I think he just wants to show him now. See, I was going to just go ahead and beat you up and get my $30 million, but now I'm going to go ahead and make you piss blood. Bernard Hopkins predicted the results of the fight that has in one way or another gathered so much hype around it. He expressed his strong belief in Canelo Alvarez's ability to dominate Edgar Berlanga in their upcoming fight. He emphasized that when the bell rings, Canelo is all business, predicting that Canelo would not only win, but knock Berlanga out within five to seven rounds. Hopkins noted that Berlanga's own claim of going for the knockout would be his downfall, as it would force him to engage directly with Canelo, who thrives in such situations. Canelo series, and that's why I say Canelo gets knock, knock, and knock him out within five or six rounds. He gets the knockout. Canelo gets the knockout. Canelo gets the knockout within six, seven rounds. Berlanga says going for the knockout as well. Huh? Berlanga says going for the knockout as well. Sure, and that's why he will get knocked out. He must, he must come to the fire. I'm going with Canelo. I could be wrong. I doubt it. Anything can happen, right? But if you're asking me, Bernardo, who you going for if you had to put money down? Canelo all day. Jose Benavidez Sr., the father and trainer of David Benavidez, pointed out the inconsistency in Canelo's statements, noting that while Canelo claimed David hadn't done enough to warrant a fight, he still chose to fight Edgar Berlanga, whose accomplishments are arguably less impressive. Jose Sr. suggested that Canelo is strategically selecting opponents he believes will make him look good, rather than those who pose a serious challenge. He said, he was saying that David didn't bring anything to the table, that he hasn't done anything, but I guess Berlanga has done more than David for him to pick him. I think Canelo right now is just trying to get fighters that he thinks he's going to look good against. Jose Benavidez Sr. went on to acknowledge that anything can happen in the ring, and while he doesn't mean to disrespect Berlanga, he believes that Canelo sees him as an easier opponent. He noted that Berlanga, unlike David, hasn't shown significant development in his recent fights, making him a seemingly safer choice for Canelo. Jose Sr. congratulated Berlanga on securing the fight, but remained confident that Canelo and his team are banking on an easy win, potentially even a stoppage. He then added, no disrespect to Berlanga, anything can happen, he might pull off a big upset, but based on his progress and fights, we've seen that he hasn't been developing that experience like Mungia. Canelo sees that, so he thinks it's an easy win for him. Everybody has a chance when they go up in the ring, but I think Canelo's team thinks they can look good and maybe even stop him. Where most of the pros think that this fight is being made for the best of Canelo, Britton Good, a seasoned boxer himself, expressed skepticism about Berlanga's abilities, suggesting that Canelo chose to fight him because he's nearing the end of his career career and wants to avoid more challenging opponents. According to Good, a fight with someone like David Benavides would have been much tougher for Canelo, but the Mexican star is now more focused on preserving his status than taking on serious threats. She can never stop him. You know, I don't, I don't even think Edgar Belinga is, is all that good, you know. I just think that he only got the Canelo fight because Canelo's on his way out and he don't want to take like the, like the really challenging fights, you know what I mean? This is the type of fight that Canelo wants, you know. Like somebody like David Benavidez or something, it would have been a hard fight for Canelo, and he's, he's slowly, slowly declining in my opinion.
So he don't want to risk that that status that he got right now. Whether it is good luck or a lucky chance for Berlanga or it is Canelo's strategy of ducking big fights, now this fight is official and has succeeded in gaining enough attention from the boxing community. Do you think Canelo will be able to defend his title or will be thrown away from his throne by someone like Berlanga? Share your thoughts with us and your friends too.